Hi y'all, happy Friday. Welcome back to Mama Sanity, TGIF, right? Um, today I'm gonna come at you with a poem um, called Bend in the Road, and then I'm gonna have my quote. And then um, I know usually on Fridays I kinda end with food for the thought, some kind of heaviness, um, something for y'all to really ponder and think about, which the poem kinda does that, but I wanna end on um, a funny, silly, quirky, goofy note, um, some family quote, or not family quotes, but movie quotes that my family and I kind of quote all the time. Like I said, I'm, I'm heavily into movies. I watch movies. And the thing about me is even when I was younger, um, when I would watch movies, I would like memorize the lines like that. So I annoy my family at times because when we're watching a movie, um, especially like the 80s movies and stuff, I know the lines like forward and backwards. So I'm like saying them along with the movie and they're like, mom, stop. But anyway, so let me get started with our poem and we'll go from there. Bend in the road. The bend in the road, sometimes we come to life's crossroads and we view that we think is the end. But God has a much wider vision and he knows that it's only a bend. The road will go on and get smoother. After we have stopped for rest, the path lies hidden beyond us is often the path that is the best. So rest and relax and grow stronger. Let go and let God share your load. And have faith in a brighter tomorrow, you've just come to a bend in the road. Now that poem is by Helen Steiner Rice, and I got that off Pinterest. Um, I, I like that um, poem because it's very true. You know, like I've said before, we all come to, you know, waves and bends and stuff in the road. And we kind of think, you know, I don't know which way to turn. But this is saying, if you just take a breath and relax and rest for a minute and be safe still and silent. That's a big thing that I've, I've learned lately is, you know, I'm always like going, 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 going like 90 miles an hour. But there's times when God's telling me, shh, be still, be quiet and relax. And you'll hear what I'm trying to lead you to next. So that's what that's about. Um, the quote for today says, when you can't control what's happening, challenge yourself to control the way you respond to what's happening. That's where all your power is. That is very true. You know, like I said, monkey see, monkey do in the past, you know, you know, there's times where I don't handle situations where I should have, where I wanted to, and I let my, my anger catch up with me and fester up, and I just like, ah, you know, blow up, and my kids are like, what the, you know, my husband's like, you know, like a light switch or whatever, and we all, we all react in bad ways, you know, you know, my husband's lost his temper, my kids have lost their temper, I've lost my temper, everybody loses their temper, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but what this is saying is, kind of learn how to to try and control it and yes it's an everyday thing uh, like I said I still have issues with that but this is saying when you can't control the situation say you're in in a place and you're in a situation and things are just coming at you and happening around you and there's nothing you can do about it you can't control it then you just need to be calm be still and just let God and the way you respond to that is other people are watching you and so other people are watching how you respond in that situation and maybe that'll help them respond in a more positive way to a negative situation later on down the road okay like I said um, I want to end with some funny movie quotes I know that you're like what does that have to do with daily motivation nothing um, but <clears throat> like I said when I was younger I quote movies all the time and I still do and it drives my family insane but it's funny because my brother does it my mom does it my sister does it and it's hilarious because sometimes we'll text each other a movie quote and we'll t we'll text the other person like and we'll say the name of the movie and we'll just start laughing or whatever you know and it just like kind of helps brighten your day so I'm kind of hoping you know that that does um brighten your day too now a lot of these are for from um 80s movies because i grew up in the 80s so like I love 80s movies and then some of um just a couple of them are from more recent movies because you know my kids and stuff and these the the more recent ones my kids and I say to each other and it's kind of funny so um Goonies <laughs> my husband can't stand this movie because my dad didn't like it either because when I was younger I've watched Goonies like every single day literally every day he would come in the door and I was watching Goonies and my dad was like Seriously, my husband does the same thing. Me and kids are watching Goonies and he's like, this again, guys, come on. But it's a funny movie. It's hilarious. I love it. And my sister even bought me, gosh, Catherine, I love you. She bought me um, a Truffle Shuffles t-shirt. So it, it, I just, I love the Goonies. So one of the quotes from Goonies that we like to quote 
all the time. I'm gonna say how it truly is said, and then my five-year-old, bless her heart, she gets tongue tangled, a tongue tied a little bit, and so she doesn't say things, so it's kind of funny how she says it, but here we go. When they're in the basement or whatever, and they're trying to find, you know, the tunnel to the treasure or whatever, and Chomp knocks over the deposit bottle, and he goes, I got it, I got it, I got it! I don't got it, and then everybody says, you klutz! And he goes, I hope it's not a deposit bottle. Okay, well, my five-year-old says, I got it, I got it, I got it, I don't got it. You sluts, hope it's not a posit bottle. And so anyway, so she, it's, she's much better at doing it. It's really cute the way she does it. And then, um, like I said, the truffle shuffle, that's one of our favorite parts. So um, Chonk is trying to get into the backyard and they've got this little doomahickey like set up to where like all these little things that, to open the gate. And so he goes, come on, let me in. And then Mouth goes, first you gotta do the truffle shuffle. And Chunk goes, come on. And, and Mouth goes, do it, come on, do it. And so then he stands up on the thing and he lifts up his thing and, and, he, and the kids just love it, it's, it's hilarious. So we all have competitions on who can do Chunk the best. Um, and then another part of Goonies that we quote all the time and um, it's so funny because my, my oldest, he doesn't even kind of realize what he's saying. But um, when they finally get into the restaurant and then it's not even a restaurant, it's where the bad people live or whatever. And so it's all like, he goes, long enough to see we need like 400 roach motels in this place or whatever. And so like she, she goes, can I get you anything? And um, they're like, yeah, no, nothing. And then Mouth, that's why they call him Mouth. Yes, um, I like a bottle of fettuccine in 1981, mwah! And then she goes, the only thing we serve is tongue. Mmm, you boys like tongue? No, 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 no. So anyway, so we quote that all the time. And then, um, that's my mom's most favorite piece. Now my girls got a kick out of this, and it was kind of disturbing to me because in the 80s, you know, she had a statue or whatever, and the guy is a statue naked or whatever, and so, Chonk, the klutz, knocks it off and breaks the guy's bottom area. And so um, the the son says, oh no, that's my mom's most favorite piece. And they're trying to put the, you know, that, that area back on the statue. And it's hilarious because the girls are just cracking up laughing and they just like, oh, my mom's most favorite piece. And I'm like, oh my gosh, y'all are crazy. So, and then of course the whole famous Goonies never say die. But then we've kind of gotten in a debate about that because then, you know, they said, well, if Goonies never say die, then they say die when they say that. So it's just, it's hilarious. Okay. Now here's a quote from the great outdoors that my kids don't have, I think they've seen it once or twice and I don't really quote it anymore, but my mom and my aunt Judy will, will totally know where I'm coming from on this. So when I was younger, I'd watch The Great Outdoors like every day all the time too. And I would constantly quote this one. And my aunt said, oh, she says it so great. So I, I probably said it a lot better when I was younger, but you know, now that I'm a lot older, I probably, you know, don't say it as great. But anyways, here it goes. <clears throat> so they are all in the living room and one family's camping out and her brother, and his his wife and twins come over and they they're uninvited or whatever anyways and they get in a big argument and a big quarrel and they start you know yelling and, and, and cussing at each other and so um and he says so the mom goes oh go blow it out your ass and she goes okay okay nobody's blowing anything out their ass what it is and then the dad goes what it is what it is is do you understand what we're trying to say and then the kid goes yeah the aunt kate and uncle roman are c completely buttheads and they go exactly so anyways i know that's silly but um i used to say that from the great outdoors oh my goodness my favorite still magnolias okay mom chad catherine i know y'all are out there watching still magnolias so there are so many good famous quotes from still magnolias that that we quote like i quote the whole movie all the time but i just picked out a few um and so in the beginning, you know, the boys, they're getting ready for the wedding and everything. And the boys put ice down the mama's back. She goes, don't put ice down my back. And then Julie Roberts is just standing there like, you should have drowned them at birth, mama. And so, and then we got, um, they're getting their hair done and they're talking about, you know, the decorations and the wedding and the reception. And she's talking about, um, what are your colors? And she goes, my colors are pink and pink. 
And she goes, your colors are blush and bashful, Shelby. And she goes, my colors are pink and pink, Mama. And she goes, how precious is what I'm going to get out Ash? She goes, it looks like that sanctuary's been hosed down with Pepto-Bismol. She goes, I like pink. Pink is my signature color. So anyways, we say stuff like that all the time. Okay. And so then this one is when Weezer is, you know, being her cranky old self. And she goes, oh, I don't know why I don't make the rules. Because she's growing tomatoes. And she's like, why are you going to get all these to me? And, you know, I try not to eat healthy if I can help it. Um, and then, oh, when they're in, in the thing, the, the lady's like asking the mom, does your dress have to go over your head? And she's just like, no. And she's like, oh, thank goodness. Cause this is her first time. She just got a job and this is her first time doing hair, I guess, in this place. And she's really nervous. And so the daughter says, calm down. You can't mess up our hair. Just tease it. Make it look like a brown football helmet. So we just think that's why my mom has brown hair. And so anyways, okay. So, um. And then, this is this is also one of the good ones. You know, um, Weeza and her dog. She's just a mean old woman. She goes, um, and she. I'm not crazy, Millie, and I just been very bad move for 40 years. So when she comes to talk to Drum about shooting the birds out of the tree, and she brings her dog, and he's losing his hair, and she's just you know cranky as can be, and she's talking to him, and um, she when she right before she leaves, she goes, "You get the magnolias out of my tree." The judge has not decided whose tree that is. And she's like, it is mine. And so it's just funny. We like to say that all the time. Um, and then let's see. The Farkle family. Okay, that one. We've been saying that since I was like way little. I I guess because our, our family so messed up and crazy and silly that every time we would go somewhere when I was younger, it was always a nightmare. And it's always like... Farkle family goes to Six Flags. The Farkle family goes here because something crazy is always happening. And so I just kind of carried that over into my chaotic, crazy family is, you know, we try and go to SeaWorld and it's, they're all fighting and arguing and blah, 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 and it's the Farkle family goes to SeaWorld. So that's just a fun little quote. And then um, this is one of the kids' um, favorites from Bruce Almighty. So on Bruce Almighty, you know, he, he gets God's powers or whatever, and um, Evan is doing the, the thing. And so he, he redoes the, the teleprompter to make Evan say what is not really written. And so he goes, I like to do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. And he goes, I like a do the cha-cha. And so it's just the, the kids go around all the time saying that. It's just hilarious. They love that. And then um, Titanic. We, you know, Titanic, you know, there's been times where I'm telling the kids goodnight and they don't want to go up to bed, but it's their bedtime. And so like, I'll, I'll never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. And we just hold hands and kiss and, you know, I love you. And then there's been times where they're in the back of the truck and like if we go camping or whatever and, you know, they're holding on, I'm the king of the world. You know, you know, okay, silly stuff like that. But the, um, <clears throat> The last one, I know this is very long-winded, but the last one is from Venom. We just watched the Venom movie, and the kids, they, they just loved it, okay? And I thought it was going to be a bad movie, but actually it's a good movie. Venom actually does not want to be bad. He wants to be good. <coughs> and so um, they're talking about this, this mean, this other mean, not cartilage, this other mean... Um, symbiote or whatever is um, possessing this other guy and so venom that's possessing the other guy has got to fight and so the girl that he possessed he was just like come on tell her you know we got to go and she was like i want to go and he goes no the fight can get ugly and she goes oh i can fight ugly and he goes not today so i know i'm being silly but um i hope y'all enjoyed and think about the um poem been in the road just calm down sit and rest and think about where you're at and where you need to go control your reactions and um, try and see that other people are seeing how you react. So if you don't want them to react in a certain way, you don't react in a certain way. And then just silly stuff that I hope you enjoy it and make you laugh. I hope you'll have a great weekend and stay sane.